Welcome to Math is Fundamental. Today, we are going to talk about how to measure segments in geometry. So we're just going to start off by um, going through some examples. First, we have an example here with a line with points A, B, and C and numbers on the line, real numbers. Sometimes we're going to have real numbers on the line, and if this is the case, we can represent distance or length using the real numbers, and those numbers we call coordinates. They're coordinates of the points. So, for example, here we have A, the point A, the coordinate is negative 4, B is at 2, and C is at 5. If I wanted the length of the segment AB, I can find the distance between the two coordinates. So to find the distance, we want to take the absolute value of the difference of the two coordinates. So here I have negative 4 minus 2. And you know what? I can color code this so you can see exactly what's going on. I have absolute value. Here's my coordinate for negative, or so for A is negative 4. My coordinate for B is 2. And the difference between them means I'm going to subtract that. So here, if I do that, I've got the absolute value of negative 6 which gives me that positive 6 because distance is always positive. Um, we could have done this as BA. If we think about length, the length between A and B should be the same as the length between B and A. So now if I did BA, I took the coordinate of B, which is 2, and the coordinate of A, which is negative 4, and I took the difference of those two coordinates, I would end up with the absolute value of 2 minus a negative 4, which is actually 2 plus 4. 2 plus 4 ends up being 6. So as you can see, we have the same distance. We have the same length with our coordinates, no matter which direction we go. All right, let's look at the next example. Um, here, a little different because we don't actually have coordinates. All we have are letters. So here, we want to represent the length of our segments using only those letters. The length of the segment AB or BA would be x1 minus x2 and the absolute value of that because again we can't have a negative distance. We want to turn that distance even if it ends up being a negative number into a positive length. If I wanted BC I would have the absolute value of x2 minus x3 to represent the length of BC. If we wanted, let's see, CA or AC, we would have the absolute value of x3 minus x1. And because we don't actually know what those numbers are, we don't know what those coordinates are, we can't go any farther than this. This is as far as we can go for those types of problems. Now, here, we're going to come into what we call the segment addition postulate. The segment addition postulate is, um, is the term that we use to talk about how to add pieces of a segment together. Now, the name postulate sounds really weird, uh, especially if you're new to geometry, but all postulate means is that it's a rule. It's a rule that we can assume is true without having to prove it. So here, our segment addition postulate says that if I have these three parts of my segment, I have A, B, and C, all points on my segment, I know that if I take the length of AB and I add it to the length of BC, well, let's see what that does. If I have AB is here, and then BC goes from there to there, if I put those two things together, what am I going to get? Well, I'm going to get the length of AC. And that's what we call the segment addition postulate. So we can use the segment addition postulate to work through our next example. So here, if I know that I have points J, K, and L on my line, J, K, the length of J, K is 4X plus 6. I don't actually know what that length is yet because I don't know what X is. But I know that 4X plus 6 represents that length. 7x plus 15 represents KL, and let's say we were given that the length of JL is 120. All right, if we know that the length of JL is 120, and I use my segment addition postulate, I'm going to make an equation 4x plus 6, which is JK, plus 7x plus 15 equals 120. 
So again, if we look at that, I'll just make a little divider there. I know that JK plus KL has to give me that whole segment JL. So that's what I'm using here to make my equation. And then we can combine like terms and solve for X. So here I have 4X plus 7X gives me 11X. 6 plus 15 is going to be 21 equals 120. I can subtract 21 from 120, and I have 11x equals, let's see, 99, ooh, and so x is 9. 11 times 9 is 99. So now we've solved for x, and I can plug that in. I can substitute 9 in for x to find the length of jk and kl. Just to, and I can do this to double check my work too. So here if I have 4 times 9 plus 6, I've got 36 plus 6, which is 42. So this here is going to be 42. And then I can find KL as well. I've got 7 times 9 plus 15. 7 times 9 is 63. Plus 15 is going to be 78. So this is going to be 78 here for KL, and if I add those two things together just, just to check my work, I should get 120. So let's see, 42 plus 78, we add those together, carry the one, and I have 120, which is awesome for us. So I've used the segment addition postulate to find the length of the pieces of the segment that I wasn't given. Now, what I want to point out now is that in geometry, we have to be really careful never to assume anything. So if we look at that last example, before we started working with our segment addition postulate, it kind of looks like K is in the middle of J and L. But if we set these two things equal to each other, we wouldn't have gotten the correct answer because we're not given any information about them being the same length. So we can only use what we, are, what we know is true, and that's that JK and KL, if I put them together, they make um, JL, which I was given was 120. So don't assume that things are equal, even if they look like they are. Now, if they do end up being equal, equal lengths, we say that the segments are congruent. So that's another uh, vocab term for you. And congruent segments, are symbolized with a little dash. If they have a matching dash, that means they're the same length. They can have one dash, they could have two dashes. As long as they match, that means they're the same length. And we would write that segment XY, remember your segment symbol, is congruent, there's our congruent symbol, symbol to YZ, segment YZ. Now, the difference between congruent and Z and equals is that we use congruent when we're talking about objects, like segments. We use equals when we're talking about numbers. So it's going to get a little confusing. Um, we want to note that if I have just x, y without the symbol, that represents length. And length, oops, length is a number. So if I have x, y, and y, z without any symbols, I can say they're equal to each other because the way I've written that represents a length. I know that might be a little confusing now, but we'll practice that in class and it'll be a little easier for you later. All right, last piece of the lesson is our next and last vocab term today, which is midpoint. If you think about the word itself, mid or middle, Point, it means the point is exactly in the middle. It bisects that segment, or it's a segment bisector. It cuts it right in half. So here, let's look at this example. We have Q is the midpoint of PR, so it's telling us that it is the midpoint. We don't have to assume that it's half because it tells us that it's half. All right, and then what are PQ, QR, and PR? So remember, without the segment symbols, they want to know the lengths. That's what it's asking us here. So if I know that it's a midpoint, then I know that this length is equal to that length. And I can set up my equation using the fact that they're equal. Instead of doing segment addition postulate, I can use the midpoint. 
and then I can combine my like terms and solve. So if I get my x's on one side of my equation, I have x minus 7 equals 1, and then I get my numbers together, I end up with x is 8. So if we plug that in, substitute it, I'm going to have PQ is 6 times 8 minus 7, which is 48 minus 7. So PQ ends up being 41. And we want to make sure this all works out in the end, so don't box anything until you're sure. We've got QR is 5 times 8 plus 1, oop, which is 40 plus 1. So QR is also 41, which is perfect. We wanted them to be equal. So now I know that those are the right values. And then PR, we just use our segment addition postulate. We add those two things together. 41 plus 41 gives us... Uh, 82. <laughs> that would be 82. So PR is 82. All right. And that concludes our lesson for today. Thank you for watching. And remember, math is fundamental.